If you think weird, unrealistic fantasy designs are a modern invention, you'd be wrong. I mean, even in the 80s, back in my day, this would have seemed like unrealistic fantasy. Anyway, if you want to see something strange and ahead of its time, buckle up. One of my viewers sent this to me. Thank you, Tristan. It sure is unique. A concept seen in a technological manuscript from 1505, and the author, whose name, by the way, literally translates to Spoonwood, was a master technician and patrician born after 1465 in Nuremberg, Germany. As a side note, he also proved himself very capable at jousting at a tournament in 1496, where he managed to hoist the count out of his saddle. So not just a bookish nerd inventing things. So this is the idea. Quite baffling at first glance, and even when you know it's supposed to work, still rather weird. It took me some digging to even figure out what it's supposed to be. This is a concept of a multifunctional weapon that can transform between different modes, so to speak. It's a steel bow that can also be converted into an armor piercer with a firearm. The uh, armor piercer is the literal translation. It's something you might call an S-talk with sort of a Katzbalger looking hilt. Okay, so first a bow configuration. You have two steel limbs. In the middle, there's a hinge, two gun barrels. So you take off the string, you fold them in, which you see right here. Now the barrels are on the other end. And then you have a conical steel socket that these bow limbs go into, which then forms the tip of the sword. So the bow limbs form the sword blade, the guard goes over it, and then you've got the barrels right here. The pommel, which is long enough to be the entire handle, goes over that. Ace the Supervillain made a quick 3D animation to visualize how the transformation works. Thanks Ace. By the way, I'll put links to his work in the description down below, along with the other credits and sources. It's not clearly shown in these drawings, but the ends of the bow limbs must be notched to accept a string and make sure it doesn't just slide off. And I imagine that might also be what makes them lock into that tip so they don't just slide out. I mean, there's probably also going to be tension because you're flexing the curved bow limbs to make them straight as they go into that conical socket. So I'm guessing you probably have to squeeze them to separate them from the tip. How useful is that tip really for thrusting? Obviously, you can't cut with this sword because there is no edge. Thrusting should work. Now, my concern would be what if you lose it in someone's body? Um, then you wouldn't be able to uh, fight anymore with a sword at that point. It depends on how good that friction fit is, unless there's some kind of lock that's not obvious here. So presumably you could take the pommel off and throw it at someone to end them rightly and then shoot a second person. Or imagine you can discharge the firearm with the pommel on it. So it becomes a pommel launcher of doom for the ultimate right here. So a bow that's also a sword that's also a pommel grenade launcher. I'm getting too excited about this. In all seriousness though, and sorry to spoil the fun, I don't think the firearm could actually be discharged with the pommel on it because there's no access to the firing mechanism then. Which is for the best, a safety feature, because just imagine you're holding the sword out and it accidentally discharges. Guess where the pommel goes? right towards you. I don't know about you, but personally, I don't think the risk of a pommel nade to the nads is worth it. How do you fire? Well, it's hard to see because he didn't draw a lot of detail there. However, in the same manuscript, there's also a design for a compact wheel lock lighter, which should work for this firearm, I think. So we have a pyrite held by the spring-loaded metal clamp that touches this wheel and we have a drawstring that if you pull it rapidly spins that wheel and then the wheel throws sparks of the pyrite. There's another wheel lock lighter here but that one looks too large and complex to be used for this weapon design. 
The fascinating part here is that, remember, this is 1505. The earliest known wheel lock pistols are from the 1530s. So this is quite early. I mean, this is basically about a generation or two after the end of the Middle Ages, depending on exactly where you want to draw the line. And by the way, you might be surprised to see modern looking screws in this design. The origin of this tech can be traced back to the ancient Greeks about 2,500 years ago. But metal screws and nuts started to be used in the 15th century. Leonardo da Vinci even sketched a screw cutting machine around 1500. And of course, let's not forget once again, the good old End Him Rightly manuscript. Yes, it's more accurately translated to End Him Quickly, but that's kind of boring, right? There is a threaded tang with a screw on pommel. The whole thing seems somewhat fragile and not the most durable design you could come up with. Obviously, because all that complexity adds failure points. The hinge is a weak spot. The tip is a weak spot. I have my doubts that it was ever really made perhaps as one of those prestige pieces, because sometimes they made combination weapons that were never intended to be used in real combat. They were really just prestige collector's item for nobles to show off with and for the craftsmen to show off their skill. That could be the case here as well. But I think it's theoretically functional. And this book is not just full of impractical nonsense, by the way, quite the opposite. There are several woodworking tools, a bench with integrated vice, and also a perfectly functional design for a self-cocking crossbow. We've seen this before and it works. So it folds open to push the sliding block forward where you have the rolling nut holding the string. So you grab it here and then when you fold it in, you cock it and it's ready to go. Or how about these nasty foot mangling devices? We have wooden pegs with metal spikes and four pronged caltrops. If you thought those were exclusively ninja gadgets, nope, even the ancient Romans made iron caltrops. But Mr. Spoonwood here also came up with a countermeasure, basically steel sandals. There's also what looks like the world's oldest office chair with wheels, 1505, well ahead of its time. All right, so what do you think about this design, this video? If you want to see more like this looking at manuscripts, do let me know in the comments and also make sure that you not only subscribe, but have also hit that silly bell because it's all too easy to miss uploads. I also post uploads on Facebook and Twitter. And if you found this interesting, you may also like some other videos I'm going to link in the description down below, including other real historical weapons that totally look like fantasy. Anyway, thank you for watching and take care, folks.